Hi, it's Dougie Wood from Valto, and this video is a continuation from our real-world Canvas Power App Examples Part 2. So if you've not seen Part 1 yet, check that out and then come back and have a look at this. I'm going to be counting down from my top 10 recent real-world Canvas Power App examples I really enjoyed working with. Canvas Power App. Now I call it a storytelling um, app because think of it almost a little bit like those books you used to have as kids where you could choose your own ending and it would navigate you through based on some questions where you would end up uh, going. And this app is very much like this. So this particular example was all about copyright usage. So um, if an employee had some questions about copyright, rather than having to go to uh, an internal team and, and sort of bombard them with questions all the time, they could put in almost the equivalent of some frequently asked questions in a patent order to give them the, the result that they needed. So a user could come into the system, click on start, and then they will be asked a series of questions. So you can see here, how to use content from scientific publications. So it might be a self-help guide to select. And now you can see that we're implying a user kind of journey using these kind of icons and lines. So I could choose to go back up if I thought actually I've gone down the wrong path here. And it's also implying that I've got these other pathways to go down. So the next question is I need to reuse a scientific article and I'm going to say it's going to be internal. Is it possible to use a link to this article? I'm going to say yes. And then it's giving me the advice, say, great, uh, using a link is, uh, is easy and does not require any permission from the copyright holder. So there we go. We've given an answer to our user without having to bother anyone uh, particularly. There are other types of outcomes which might be warnings or sort of critically, no, do not do this. And we could also um, potentially um, automate a flag to somebody that if someone went down a really critical path, uh, maybe there is a, a, a follow up that's required with someone internally to have a conversation with them. And number nine, we've got a records management system. So this records management system um, was built, and, and again, this is just proof of concepts uh, at this stage um, uh, uh, in our demo kind of environment. But this um, was actually built for a client, which um, they have a massive warehouse full of physical paper records, and they needed to be able to keep track of where they were um, and actually have a system checking them in, checking them out. So I'm going to continue through to here and you can see, well, what am I interested in seeing? I could see files or boxes because technically every file that they have in this big warehouse is contained within a box. So each file has a unique kind of barcode and a box has a barcode and they can use them to sort of check in and check out. So I'm going to say I'm interested in files and I can come into here and you can see I could search by uh, box number, the shelf, the physical location. Um, I can choose to um, open a box. So once I've actually searched and found a box, I could choose to open it. I could add a new box. Um, so let's just jump into opening a box. And then you can see here, uh, we've got uh, th this box and we can see uh, the details of this. So when is the box up for a review? Um, when might it need to be archived? I could choose to archive the box if I wanted to do from here. And then that would then go down a, a similar route to what files would do as well. So the actual records which sit in the boxes go through an archiving process. Um, this actually has a whole bunch of power automate workflows in the background as well, um, which actually allows um, for things like chases, reminders of when uh, certain boxes or records within boxes uh, need to either be physically destroyed or archived, um, and it actually chases up that process. And number eight, uh, we've got a portfolio, portfolio management tool. That was a bit of a mouthful. So again, this was just a high level proof of concept, more of a design piece to kind of uh, actually get the point across of what could be done with Canvas Power Apps. Um, but essentially within here, um, what we've got is a way of kind of building out kind of um, sort of portfolios and then adding in things like um, companies, almost like CRM kind of information uh, about the companies, updates related to them, any interactions related with the companies, objectives of what the portfolios are trying to achieve um, and, and other types of things like creating tasks and reminder tasks and things like that. Um, but you can see across the top, we've got some quick actions. So we can see alerts. Um, we can see sort of notifications, things, checklists for me to do, as well as being able to create new sort of interactions as well. So every time there's an interaction based on a portfolio, I can say what company it relates to, the date it took place, the attendees, um, as well as 
the overall kind of outcome um, uh, of how you felt the sort of meeting went um, and, and that sort of thing. And then all of that is then logged against the company uh, where we can see updates um, and it produces dashboards as well of kind of interactions that have taken place. Um, what t how many tasks we've got um, and, and other types of charts. So again, it was just a, a concept piece uh, to show what potentially could be possible, um, but you can see it's a really good way of doing this. And actually going forward into the more production version, uh, we're looking at doing things like embedding Power BI uh, dashboards into this to make it even more powerful. At number seven, we've got an auditing Power App. So this was again, a proof of concept that we were using for a client which was looking to audit uh, machinery within uh, their warehouse. Um, so for example, I could go in and say, start a new audit, and then it's gonna present me with a set of questions. So for example, is the line clean in order and the working area environment safe? So I might wanna start that as my high level kind of check, which then has some sub questions underneath it. So it's gonna ask me, for example, check that there is no parts either on the ground uh, or that out identification or from other uh, another reference to the, the one currently in production. So I can say, yeah, that one's fine. This one's fine, uh, this one's fine, but maybe, oh, hang on, there's a problem with this particular check. So I can say, no, it's not okay. That could then spawn me up a action for someone. So I can say, who's the owner of the action? Maybe it's the person who's on shift at the time, uh, the target completion date, uh, the action sort of title and the corrective action that is actually required to be taken. So we could use this, um, we could automate some of those bits. So we might just know automatically who's on shift so we don't need to assign that or a target completion date could be set by a priority field potentially. Um, so all of this information can actually be uh, sort of automated as well. And then we can issue those tasks to somebody that has a task list to work through to make sure that they're completed and the corrective actions are actually followed up. Now, I'll, Take this with a pinch of salt in terms of what this application is being used for specifically, but treat it as a kind of a, a way of uh, making sure that things are happening in a very specific order to a specific checklist to reduce the chances of human error or forgetting to do a particular task at a certain time. In Act 6, we have an employee appraisal system. So this appraisal system, again, just a proof of concept, it looks very basic, um, but it was all designed around um, a company that wanted to have an appraisal, um, which was sort of automatically being generated at the beginning of the year, and would have sort of touch points throughout the year where people can feedback about how they're getting on with their particular tasks and personal improvement. So they'll click on new appraisal, and then you might put into here an objective. So mine might be said to complete a Microsoft exam, Success measure, pass the exam. These are all uh, result. It's 100%, something like that it needs to be. Uh, and then I can add that uh, objective uh, and then I'll add it as, as I kind of go through. Um, now, th this is something that you build up over time. We can add in different fields. It's just a little example uh, of what this would look like. You could then sort of track your overall uh, performance, so overall comments, overall performance type of questions, uh, development objective plans, so what your current role is uh, and potentially what you, f what you want your future role to be. Um, and then uh, so you can have some check boxes to almost um, explain a couple of other different types of um, questions related to personal development. And then once you're happy with all that, you can submit that to your manager. It would say, okay, thank you. This has been submitted to your manager. And then a quick link here, just to sort of simulate the manager's approval. So the manager would then maybe come through and then review each of the objectives that have been submitted. So I can see passing the exam. So the manager comment might be say something like, uh, yes, uh, Dougie passed the exam. Great work, something like that. Um, and it might be say that they uh, achieved this or exceeded it. So maybe exceeded it and said, uh, and he passed another exam separately or something like that. So it might be exceeded. Any additional details, they can then go through, uh, mark as any kind of potentials, um, as well as saying submit the approval. And then that then logs that all down. Um, the actual production version of the system would then actually generate some PDFs, which would then be sent to HR to store against their employee record, um, which would have the, the original submission, as well as the manager's review submission against it as well. In at five, we have a uh, IT support desk system. 
So again, really simplistic, um, and, and obviously the app wouldn't necessarily ask you if you're an user or an admin or something like that. This is just simulating what it would look like. But you can go in and log in as a help desk user. Um, so I'm actually raising support tickets for myself. I can choose to uh, add a new request. So I could say title might be something like my laptop won't start or something like that. I could then set categories, it's laptop related. Um, I could set priority. Now typically actually with end users, you wouldn't necessarily allow them to, to set priority because obviously everything's gonna be high priority. Um, but you can see, for example, the different types of fields that we could ask um, to help sort of, um, sort of channel what type of question this is. Um, ask them for a bit of description. Uh, it won't start up in the morning don't we all? Um, so then I click on create and then that'll then create me my little task and then it'll bounce me back into my, my view and I could see then here where it's up to as the kind of IT guys are going through and updating it, it might say that it's been worked on and it's complete and who it's assigned to and things like that so I can see all of that information directly in here. Now this is a very simplistic kind of option um, but if you've only got a very small sort of IT team um, this could be a really good way of managing tickets if you're currently just doing it with the likes of a uh, shared mailbox instead. Instead. And number four, we have a location check-in power app. Now, this is really simplistic in terms of um, the, the, the usability of this. So there's not a huge amount to show. It's more of a con concept piece that actually with the Canvas Power Apps, you can have a geolocation to know exactly where the user of the app is within a sort of four by four meter square radius. So this could be used for all sorts of different things. We recently used this for a healthcare provider that was sending out nurses um, uh, to, to certain locations. And they had a kind of, the company had a duty of care to make sure that that person um, was well, not only turning up on site when they said they were going to, but also making sure that the duty of care is that they're, they're leaving and they're, they're um, not put in a kind of situation where no one's checking up if they've not checked in. So they would turn up on site um, to, to the person's uh, house, they would say sign in and then that would log into a little database to say yes Joe Bloggs has signed into this particular building and he could also use the, exactly the same app to check back out again. Um, we could then do some pretty whizzy kind of automation that we know that say for example he should be there for 45 minutes and if maybe he's not uh, checked out after 60 minutes um, then maybe we need to send a little chaser to his line manager to do a welfare check just to make sure he's okay and he's actually left the building. This same technology could be used for all sorts of different things though. Um, it's been combined with things like barcode scanners in the past before. So for the likes of uh, maybe like a cleaner that's saying that they're going to go and clean swimming pools in a hotel or something like that. So rather than just saying, uh, writing on a piece of paper, yes, I've cleaned the pool, um, maybe they could scan something on a wall to sort of say, yes, I was there. Or we've seen this with the likes of security guards who have to patrol very large factories and warehouses and, uh, and places like that. And they physically have to every hour walk around the site um, uh, to, to, to do inspection, to make sure there's no burglars, um, but actually we can physically prove that they've done that by them scanning barcodes as they go around the building um, or clicking that check-in button at certain areas of the building um, to actually then log to say, yes, this is where I, I physically was at that point in time. Um, it could also be used as well for like office people um, sort of checking in, so uh, like a check-in, check-out. So rather than having to have a physical box on the wall that you go in and sign into, it's just something that you have on your mobile phone. Once you're at the office, you click on that and say, yeah, I'm, I'm at the office now. That then signs you in. You can sign out as well uh, using that. And you can do that uh, anywhere within the kind of office sort of premises because it will know the address of the building. And number three, we have a reflective journal. This app is actually something, there's a proof of concept we're building in uh, Vault at the moment, which is actually all related to some customer service training that we're doing, uh, where as part of that, we want um, our staff to kind of reflect on interactions that they've had with our customers, um, whether they be good um, or whether they require kind of um, improvements and things like that um, that we want them to reflect on them so we've got some information here about our kind of uh, our methodology um, as well as our kind of service standards so what we categorize as our different services um, uh, and also the actual journal itself so within the journal we can go into here and we can uh, actually put a reflection so I'm going to say I'm going to add a new reflection 
and I can say what this relates to. So it might be related to uh, uh, escalating a, of a ticket or something like that. So this is something that we're looking at internally is how we are escalation routes work better. So I might want to say, well, what happened? Um, so we, we assigned a, a ticket to somebody. Uh, so why did it happen? So we're now analyzing, we're reflecting, why did this situation happen? What could we change and how could we change it in the, uh, in the future? And then we're also assigning as of a level to this. So level one being very bad, level four being very good. And then that means then we can um, store all of that data and our line managers can then review this back with our employees to look at well what actually happened maybe there's a challenging situation what could be done better could we provide some more mentoring or, or training for you and things like that and then all of this information is nicely stored uh, as a database that the line managers can review through and then make that part of their personal development plan in at number two um, i have a naming standards power up now, this isn't something necessarily you'd put in play mode, but I've got it in edit mode to show you. And uh, this is a real example. So when you're actually looking at building out your Canvas Power Apps, I would strongly suggest having one or multiple even example Power Apps that your citizen developers, people who are building the Power Apps, can go and have a little look at. So here's just a rough example of maybe a naming standards um, or naming conventions app where you can go and you can show um, the sort of the naming standards, maybe how you're grouping things. Um, if you're prefixing labels with LBL, um, um, or IMG for Im uh, images um, and, and different ways that you might want people to actually use naming conventions within Power Apps. I've also seen other example internal apps like this for things like responsive design. So you can show people how to use responsive design um, or branding. So what colors you might want people to use um, and fonts and sizes and stuff like that. It's really good to have those type of example internal apps, even if they're not being used for anything particular, they're just literally use an example uh, or a starting point as a template for other people. It's a great thing to do. Then in at number one, uh, something that we've been looking at recently, which is really interesting, is an onboarding tasks power app. So this app is basically for new starters who are coming on board um, and they will come into here and we can see that it's automatically pulling out some pictures of our kind of employees and colleagues that this person might be working with. Uh, we can click on get started and then basically the whole purpose of this is that you can then track the kind of tasks which uh, new starters are doing. So things like having company kind of profile photos, writing a little bit about me, building employee um, profile. So you might want to say set uh, company profile photo, make sure that your, your profile photo is uploaded directly into their profile, write a little bit of a about me. So this might be, for example, um, you want um, to write, you want them to write a little bio, and that's then going to automatically be submitted to your communications or your marketing team who are going to create a little blog article about them, for example. Um, you can build out your kind of employee profile, so personal information, experiences, skills, things like that, which can all f feed into the Delve profile. Um, also, you can see team members. So, for, ex for example, we could say who we report into. Uh, we can see um, kind of peers uh, and things like that, as well as general kind of company information. So, FAQs, com company leadership, important contacts, um, things like that, useful resources, and, and sort of, uh, that sort of stuff we can link out to. So, this is really good, and it's available on mobile phones and tablets, and it's just something that you can use for people to get started really quickly and easily and see where they're up to in the overall kind of journey of being onboarded. I hope you enjoyed that video and there's some food for thought for you to take away and think about what actually you could be using Canvas Power Apps to do in real world uh, scenarios. Um, if you did like this video, um, please do subscribe to our channel, provide some sort of questions below if you've got any uh, and like the video um, and stay tuned um, and look out for any future videos from our YouTube channel. Thank you.